Good afternoon, Sean here from Mountains Garage. Today we're going to go over the highlights of assembling a 9 inch Ford differential. They're kind of fun, they're a lot of work, there's right ways and wrong ways to do it. Let's go over a few things. First thing I like to do is take all the parts out of the box, take a look at them, make sure I have the right ratio and all the parts to complete the job. Then I'll take the ring and pinion they're usually covered in styrofoam dust and clean it all up and actually stone the back side where it joins, in this case, the spool or the differential. I also do the surface of the spool or the differential to make sure it's perfectly flat. I just have like, it's like a sharpening stone you'd use for your jackknife, but I keep it just for this purpose. Make sure I have the right ring gear bolts and I'll go ahead and with this upside down set the spool down over the ring gear and pick it up and stop my bolts with a drop of Loctite on each one and gently if you have to draw the ring gear on but it should pretty much go on by itself uh, this is my disclaimer on rear ends and a lot of jobs if you're a mechanic you already know what I'm talking about but it's all about how much force you can apply to something before it goes the other way and becomes junk uh, rear end work is brutal at times you, know, you got to press this on, press that on, and then press it back off, and we'll get into that. But you just got to be careful what you're doing. Ultimately, you don't hurt a thing. If you hurt something, get new parts. Don't continue. That's my daily advice. I should have mentioned that before I put the ring gear on, I use this uh, my favorite, one of my new favorite tools to remove the old bearings from the spool. It pulls them off without damage. It's a really handy rig if you're reusing barons or some instances like a Dana 60 where the shims are behind the barons. Uh, it's really cool. It's a nice rig. It's about three in a box, but if you're going to do a lot of differential work, well worth it. So I'd already pressed on the barons. The ring gear's on and everything's tight. That's done. Ready to install. The pinion. In this case, I'm not running a crush collar. I'm running a shim pack. You can buy it to replace the crush collar. In this case, in the Daytona pinion support. And that requires you to assemble it a few times without the seal. So you take your best guess and you assemble it. I have a worn out pinion nut and some fat washes and that's actually one of the shims that go in the stack. And you have to keep assembling it. In this case, the yoke slid right off and on the pinion stem which was handy a lot of times they don't so you got to put a puller on here to get it off every time when it's wrong this is going to take you a couple times unless you're really lucky in fact i wouldn't trust it if i thought i had it the first time but basically you assemble it. i used to like to assemble it until this is actually too tight and then take three or four thousandths out of my stack and you get just the right amount of drag uh, this is not a street gear. Street gear, I give it a little more rotational drag. This is a race gear, so it's a... Uh, I can't do it. I don't have enough hands, but... It's kind of a feel thing, but it, this has just got the slightest amount of drag on it, and that's going to break in when the bearings break in. It'll have very, li very little drag, but not be loose. Uh, setting up rear ends is all about bearing preload. If you don't have initial preload on new bearings, or at least put the used bearings back where they were with zero clearance but very little preload once they break themselves in they kind of set at a zero if you want to call it uh, that's critical if you start just at zero and then it wears in and gets loose so you've just ruined the whole job so that's where a nine inch Ford this does not apply but if you don't have a case spreader and are able to spread your case on a uh, carrier style differential for your carrier bearings, if you're just driving this into the case without spreading the case first, because that's how the factory put it together, they spread the case. Uh, you're starting at zero, and when the bearings break in, that's going to be loose. So, it doesn't apply to a 9-inch Ford, because we have spanner nuts that are really handy for setting. You know, that's, that's why I love a 9-inch Ford, this thing is made to work on. You, know, you set the pinion up on the bench, you shim the depth right here, the shims. And uh, they're really a handy rig. So I was lucky the yoke will sli would slide right off the pinion stem. But every time I had to change my shim stack, I had to put a 
puller behind the pinion support itself and push on the pinion stem and pull it all apart because there's just enough drag. You've got to kind of tap the bearing down onto the stem, the outer bearing, and it comes apart just as hard. Uh, this is where, you know, when you're running used stuff, it sometimes goes together easier. New stuff is usually got just enough clearance to make it uh, a little firmer going together. But anyway, I got it on my third try. I'm happy with the drag. That's done. So when you finally get the proper drag, you get the pleasure of taking it apart one more time to put the seal in. Now this is my second tip of the day about seals. If you don't pack this inner cavity, I used just good old Vaseline petroleum jelly. If you don't pack that, when you beat on that seal, that spring's probably gonna fall out. You just ruin the whole job. Every seal, no matter where it's going, you pack that cavity. Now this seal, this red stuff is actually like Loctite, excuse me, it's actually like Permatex, but if you feel the need to still add something else, cause God, I take a lot of <laughs> silicone off a lot of jobs that doesn't need to be there. You can put the slightest amount, I like to use clear, just the thinnest, thinnest bead. My buddy, uh, world famous Bob, if he's watching, he knows I'm talking about him. A long, long time ago said, you know, there's only so much that isn't going to squish out. Well, that's a fact. The thinnest bead, I mean, you can just make that look wet and you've done your job. Because that's all that's going to be left when you assemble something. So putting on a half inch thick bead, unless you're trying to fill a gap like on the end of an intake manifold, do the next guy a favor and just, you know, use the proper amount. So, you put the seal back in and you reassemble the pinion. And if it's a good day, it's still at the same rotational drag and you can call that done as well let's talk about the case for a minute this is a brand new Yukon 3.25 Baron aluminum through bolt case other than being uh, moderately covered in cosmoline or some kind of protective goop uh, it's really nice uh, I hardly ever listen to my own advice but before you install, oh wait, back up about the Yukon case compared to other brands. I like that the Yukon uses a snap ring to hold the tail bearing in. That's the third bearing on the pinion that goes in the case. That is so handy. That Ford rig, I don't even know what to call it. It's like a big star wash you drive in after the, after you drive the bearing in. It just sucks. And a lot of your cheaper aluminum cases run that. If you can get one with a snap ring, that's where it's at. But... Where I don't take my own advice sometimes is before I go ahead and install that bearing, you should mock up everything inside the differential just to make sure it clears, because in this case, it didn't. I had to grind a little bit, which means you got to take it all back apart, clean everything again. I had to grind a little bit here, because it's a pretty fat ring and pinion, and it hit just the slightest amount before I could get the ring gear over and get the backlash gone. So, I took it all back apart, ground it a little bit, re cleaned it, reassembled the whole thing, so it's now it's extra, extra clean. The aluminum cases are nice. They're about 17 pounds lighter than the cast iron ones. I've weighed them a few times. But the caps have pins, which make removing the cap somewhat of a challenge. You don't just want to drive something in between there because you'll destroy it. So if you gently tap up on it, and I actually use my thinnest scraper i'll get it if I, one side gets a gap i'll tap on the other side with a rubber hammer so it don't hurt anything and uh once you've had them off and on a couple times it's not so bad this is a u.s gear brand ring and pinion and i'm really impressed i've put a few house brands in lately where they just come blank with very little information as far as setting up the pattern this one's actually been not only running on the machine but they took the time to show you what your final pattern should look like because that's what they want and they gave the checking distance of 1.024 that's from this to the potting line I'll show you that in a second uh, if you're not sure what this dimension means because a lot of times it's not this it depends on the manufacturer you can call the manufacturer uh, the last few house brand gears I put in I called the big rear end warehouse I said well start with a 20,000 shim that should get you there well this is a lot better. I appreciate information. So, how do we get to that distance? This is a machinist parallel. It's 
0.250 thick, just the one I happen to use. So I'll measure from here to here. Now a depth mic is the ultimate. It's gonna sit perfectly flat. And you can get down there. You can also achieve good results with a dial caliper. Uh, if you're using a dial caliper, just do it several times until you get the same reading repeating because uh, it's very easy to be wrong with that. And a few thousandths do matter. So, there's no guarantee that this half is going to be cut the same as this half. In this case, this differential is, but a lot of times they'll be off several thousandths, and that's going to skew your checking distance, which is from the imaginary half. Well, it's not imaginary. It's right there. I'm going to measure it drop down to the end of my pinion stem. In this case, just to be sure, I called the manufacturer to make sure that that 1.024 is down to the head through this hole, and he assured me it was. So now I know what I'm doing, and I can measure down to that, and hopefully get it right the first try. Now I've set the ring gear and spool in the case, and I've installed my caps. The halves are marked. These came marked 1-1 one, one and 2-2. Two, two. It matters. They have to go back. And you need to be able to install these by hand. With the, I like to hold the adjuster up into this so it spins freely. Gently set it down here. It should go flush, and that should still spin freely. Do not tighten anything, put any stress with the bolts. You should be able to push that down over the pins completely flat by hand, and that should still rotate easy. Then I installed the nuts and washers. Now the washers have a top and a bottom. At least put them all the same direction. I like to taper them so they taper toward the nut, you know, because I am a nut. The nuts actually have the brand marked on them. They should all go the same way. Details matter. Does that really matter in the big picture? You could probably run it upside down, but I can't stand it like that. I have to do it this way. My issue or not, I just try to be consistent. So, these spin by hand still. These are just finger tight, well, wrist tight with a ratchet. You could spin this, and I got them tight against each other. So when I affect moving the carrier, I'll move a half a turn this side, take a half a turn on this side. Right, because right now we're effectively at zero preload. The beauty of a 9 inch Ford is I can pull the pinion out assembly all day long and I probably will not be taking the spool and the ring gear out again. That's probably final once I set the backlash. But I've already uh, set just the pinion in several times and measured my depth till I come up with the 1.024. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it right on the first try with my one shim. Now that's a shim. It's not a gasket. It doesn't need silicone. There's an O-ring that I'll install when I'm all done right here. And I'll put some lube on it and I'll push it in the case. It seals here. It's not a gasket surface. I don't know why people think they need to put silicone on everything. Did I mention that already? <laughs> Another reason I install the ring gear first this is a through bolt housing. Three of them are external. One of them's behind the pinion. So when you forget to put the uh, bolt in before you put the pinion in, you get to take it apart again. No big deal. But it's a lot easier this way. I've set my shim on my studs. Now I'm going to put the pinion in. In this step, I'm checking the ring gear run out. You got to get creative when you have an aluminum case and a magnetic dial indicator. But I just set it up on that face right there and rotate it. In this case, I got less than a thousandths all the way around. Can't beat that. Same story, checking the backlash. I, in this case, stuck the magnetic indicator on my, my stand. And uh, went online, US gear says six to eight thousandths for a competition ring gear. Eight to 12 for street. I'm about eight. I'm going to leave it. And, uh... Check the pattern next. Now you're not painting the side of the Titanic here. I only paint a couple gears, just like they did. It looks great. I just use a wrench and I pull it down through, and back it back out a couple times. I have sufficient drag in my pinion. I don't need to hold that. And it made a nice pattern. I'm gonna call it good. Final assembly of the pinion. I've lubed the hole. I've installed the O-ring and put a little lube on that, you know, just in case. The install kit came with some fairly nice grade 8 bolts, but 
no washer. You put a regular washer on it, it hangs out over the edge of the pinion support. It looks bad. I could run AN washers. They're nice and small, but I start, I'm kind of a fastener geek, so uh, I got these nice grade eight flange bolts. Only takes five. He's a good friend of mine. He's going in his 55 Chevy Gasser. It's just a better choice. You don't have to use what they give you. Going together. If you've ever built a Harley Davidson motorcycle, you know Loctite's your friend. Well, same situation here, just a dab to help hold it in. I've neglected to mention when I assembled the pinion on the bench for the final time. On the splines for the yoke, I also put the tiniest bit of clear sealer all the way around because I don't want oil weeping out of here. On a street setup, is usually a slinger underneath here. You don't really need it in drag racing. You don't need it at all. In fact, you're probably better off without it. And uh, But yeah, just a little bit on the splines to keep oil from coming out under here. The nut itself has seal around it as well. It comes on the nut. So just try to keep the oil inside the differential. That's better looking. Lastly, I take each through bolt, loosen it and take the nut off one by one. Put the tiniest bit of sealer down on the shank so a little bit bleeds out under the washer. I don't want to see it when it's done, but that's another path for oil to escape. Because that's what oil's job is, I guess, to find its way in and things, or out. So I do that on each one. There's only three external. All right, a few more notes on final assembly. The 90s Ford is kind of crude in relation to the distance between the side spanners. So I typically, after I'm at zero, side to side preload, bearing preload we're talking here. And my, and my backlash is correct. I will tighten the opposite side of the ring gear, tighten until that lines up. Sometimes when they're new, you gotta bend that in a little bit so it actually engages the hole. Uh, a while ago, I was making a different spanner wrench for each brand of differential. Then I got smart and just made a, well, I got a mail and I made an oval hole so I can adjust it. So this actually, Fits right in here. I used to try to do it with a couple punches and a pry bar. Nothing but a pain. This fits fits right in nice. Plenty of power up because of the length of it. Works really good. So I bring I'm at zero. I tighten this one up to be able to put the lock in. And then I take either one or two flats, depending on what I'm doing. This is a drag differential. I only went up to end up being like one and a half to get that one to lock in. And that's my side bearing preload from zero, about a flat and a half. The through bolts, the torque, the short bolt that's behind the pinion will torque right up no problem. Doesn't give any spooky feeling. The long ones that go all the way through the case, after about 65 pounds, I think they just start tightening like guitar strings. You know, the listed torque is 75, but use your head. You could probably break the bolt if you wanted to. I got these at 75. I did it in increments. Uh, and we made it. So now this baby's done. Off to see if it's life of abuse. Uh, third tip of the day. This video contains three tips. That's pretty rare. Uh, your torque wrench. I bought my torque wrench when I was probably 16 or 17. It's paid a lot of money for it. And always set it back to zero before you put it in the box. Don't leave it twisted up tight. It won't be accurate that way. I've had mine checked twice. After all the years, it's still accurate or close enough for me. Like and subscribe. I need more followers. Everybody says the same thing. I'm a long way from being where I want to be, but I keep making videos anyway. Maybe someday good will come from it. Either way, have a great day. Talk to you later.